guys, and welcome to episode 78 of the Crochet Cakes podcast, a podcast about crochet, knitting, and today I've even got sewing. How have you guys been doing for these past two weeks? I really hope you've been doing well and that you've had time to yourself and that you're not getting cabin fever. I know in a lot of places, people have been quarantined or cocooning for a month or more, so it can be a very, very trying time. And I hope that my podcast brings you a little bit of joy during this time because um, I have to say, being able to record a podcast for you guys has been a very enjoyable thing for me. Not that it usually isn't, but it just feels like um, keeping you guys company at an important time, which um, I think we all need a little bit of that, right? I mean, sometimes just even walking down the street and seeing another human being, you're like, oh my God, look, it's a person. <laughs> At least that's how I'm feeling because my husband and I have been uh, cocooning or self-isolating, social distancing, whatever you want to call it for a while. I think I'm going into my third week. My husband's going into his first, um, into his second week. He's an essential worker, so he wasn't really allowed to work from home, but now they've kind of just made it so that he can work from home. So that's good. It's a lot less stressful for us, you know, in terms of what germs are you tracking in and out, what glitter is going in and out of the house. Um, my dog's just not, he's not happy at all. So yesterday, um, there's always a couple of neighbors that come out into their driveway and yesterday uh, we were all wearing masks and still keeping at least a six foot distance from each other but the dogs got to see each other and just say hello so they were very much um, happier with that and what was going on. So at least there was that, you know, um, to change the routine. But I do have a lot to share with you guys today, so I'm going to try and get to it as quickly and as detailed as possible. I have a crochet finished garment to share with you guys. I have a pair of finished socks to share with you guys. I have a pair of half finished socks to share with you. And I've got upcoming projects and some favorites because I thought it would be really great if we could share me via this video and you in the comments below some things that have been cheering you up during this um, quarantine time. So first and foremost, why don't we move on to finished objects because I don't know if you noticed but I'm wearing one and I'm wearing an item that I haven't shared with you in a long long time and that is because I had um, submitted the proposal to a um, kind of a monthly subscription box so that they would show it in their um, yeah in, in the subscription and upcoming garment subscription that they were trying to put together with indie dyed yarns but uh, I never heard back from them they said they would get back to you in two weeks and it's been Let's see, I posted that in February, I think it maybe was the 12th. So it's been two months and they haven't gotten back to me. I wrote them an email and I um, didn't receive a reply. So I understand, of course, that with all this that's going on, it could have been delayed, but um, I don't think they would have delayed for almost three months. So I'm just going ahead and I'm gonna share it with you. And I'm going to insert a picture because I think that's much more effective than me standing up um, because you won't get the full effect. But what you can see from the camera and what I can see that you can see is basically the top. So this is a lacy top um, shirt, blouse, it's more of a blouse really, um, and it's crocheted in two pieces and it's seamed together. It is crocheted from the bottom up and then you attach your neckline, the sleeves, um, you don't attach them because it's crocheted in a T-shape, bottom up, and yeah, it's worked in one of my favorite stitches, which is extended single crochet. And I'm very, very excited to share this black blouse with you guys. The pattern will go live on the blog on Tuesday and it will also go live on Etsy because I am publishing my patterns on both uh, free on the blog for anybody 
and everybody to make it, but I'm also putting them up for sale on Etsy, it, very inexpensively, um, about $3 um, for a garment, just because I wanted to give, I know that um, some people have um, the software that reads whatever's on the website, and I have ads on my blog because I'm trying to make a, a full-time job out of my blog. And I'm trying to, you know, get income going so that I can work from home and put out lots of great designs for you guys and for me as well. Because you can always trust that anything I put on my blog is something that I will use as well or I will make or there was a reason behind this make. I try not to design things that I would never use in my day-to-day -day life, which is why I love designing clothes because I use them. Even in this quarantine time, I'll just wear my crochet around the house because why not celebrate crochet? And I know that some people think because it's Florida and it's hot, you shouldn't use wool socks. Not me, my feet are always cold and I love the feeling of wool socks on my feet just walking around the house. And I can only use them about once though because dog. Whoever out there said that Shibas don't shed, they only t shed twice a year, lied, okay? They lied. Shibas shed twice a year for six months at a time, okay? There's so much hair in this house that our vacuum, you know, Roomba co-ready thing runs twice a day, the poor thing. It runs twice a day. And then behind that, I'll Swiffer every other day and I have to use three Swiffers to collect all the dog hair. And then I'll mop. And then I'll suffer again. It's, it's crazy. It's just crazy the amount of hair that that dog lets loose. So it's not good for him. And it's not good for us because Edison and I have really bad allergies. And guess what? So does our dog. So when he's shedding, he is nonstop scratching his nose and sneezing. And yes, before you say anything, he is, um, prescribed by the vet, an allergy pill. He has to take one every single day. If not, he's he suffers so, so much. Um, he gets an upset stomach, you know, because it's just like a human, you know? When you have a lot of allergies, your eyes are droopy and your skin itches. And speaking of skin itching, my face allergies have also gotten really bad. Um, you can't really tell from the camera, but my face is so sore and I'm trying not to scratch it. Anyway. <laughs> I'll update you all on all that personal stuff a little later on. I guess what I was trying to say, I got so sidetracked, is that I'll always, for the most part, design things that I will use because I know that, um, actually, I don't think I've made anything that I haven't used. So let's, let's just, Ow. Let's just scratch that and start all over again. So, um, the patterns that you find on Etsy, I am um, attempting to upload them with extra little bits that you wouldn't find on the blog. So, sometimes it'll include a row count and things like that. So, the first three that are on the blog are the Las Nubes blouse, which is a pineapple stitch top worked in the round worked bottom up construction completely in the round and then you've got the bubble in time top which is a blouse that has a bubble stitch border and bubble stitch sleeves the um, those two um the last newest ones is not free on the blog so what you pay for is the full set of instructions to make it and some tutorials to make the uh reverse raglan shaping and the a bubble in time top i'm working on getting a little tutorial put together for the bubble stitch border and include a row count the vintage waves sock pattern it for the moment doesn't have anything extra but I'm, i am going to put together a tutorial on how to work the um, short row heel because i have had questions on the short row heel and I understand that if you've never made a pair of socks before, it can be really, really confusing what I mean, even though I did try to show in pictures, but it's just, it's really not the same. 
So that's how it stands at the moment. And this top includes a row count and uh, two extra pictures to help you with constructions. So those are the, the kind of things that I'm working on now because I have the time and I'm enjoying being able to create extra things for you guys so, so much. It's, it's just really been great and bad as well. And But I'll get more on that a little bit later. What I'm trying to say is that in a discombobulated way, I wanted to make my patterns as accessible as possible. And I know that some people, they use reading software that doesn't work well in a blog with a lot of ads because it makes it hard for the software to load and the blog to load at the same time. So you can purchase the pattern and that will help you read the pattern as well. So that's where I was going with this. And also, of course, it's easier to ma magnify a PDF if you need to look into detail with the pictures. I am providing um, high resolution pictures. Of course, some of that resolution is kind of lost in translation because when I go from my one software to transferring it to PDF to uploading it to Etsy, the quality may be dumbed down and things like that, but yeah. Oh, and also the thing with the vintage waves pattern and the bobble and time top, they, I try to write my pattern, my patterns in English and Spanish. I've been a bit remiss doing it in Spanish for the last two patterns, uh, which includes this top, which I haven't even told you the name of. This is the summer fan top, okay? And I'm gonna, now that I'm properly talking about this top, insert some more pictures here. Um, but essentially it is worked bottom up in a T-shaped construction and then it's seamed at the shoulders and on the sides and under the underarms. But you can do the underarms all in one go and then just attach and do from the neck to the shoulders. And then you are attaching your, um, doing a neck band. And this blouse was inspired by one of my favorite blouses when I was a teenager. I've always loved um, shirts that go up to your neck and then have all this lacy feminine feel to them. So that's what I was trying to go for. But at the same time, I didn't want it to be too tight on the body because I know that not a lot of people are comfortable with tight. And in the summer, nobody wants tight anything unless it's a bathing suit, but then over 90% of your body is exposed and tight doesn't really bother you then. So that's where I was going with the design for this top and I hope you enjoy it. And like I said, it's gonna go live on Tuesday. This podcast should be up on Monday and today is Sunday. So those dates make sense. <laughs> and of course, if you follow me on Instagram, I will let you know when the pattern goes live. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. And if you would like to follow my blog, you are more than welcome to. Um, in fact, please follow my blog. <laughs> <laughs> I try to post uh, at least two new patterns a month and there's my unfolding series and that is basically just a monthly wrap up of what the month has been like. I've done February and March and I'm going to work on April because can you believe it? April is almost over. So that's my first finished object to share with you guys. And my second finished object is a pair of crochet socks. And I'm super happy to share these with you because I loved making them. I, I loved the yarn I used. I loved the stitch I chose. I loved the inspiration behind the pattern. Basically, I loved every single thing about the socks. So I'm gonna show them to you off the soft blocker first because I just want you to keep in mind how different crochet socks are to knitted socks, okay? This is my crochet sock. It looks tiny, it fits perfect. We have a two inch toe, which is my preference, and then we have about four inches of foot when we start, and then we start our gusset decrease increases. So that's about five inches of foot. And then we do our heel. And this time I worked a true heel flap and gusset. So there's increases, there's decreases, and there is kind of, I guess,
guess you would still call it short row shaping because to work this heel, you start uh, working one direction and then you go up and around, attach, up and around, attach. That's how you work this heel. And it just, uh, I love the socks. I love the socks. The cuff is worked in squished single crochets, which is the same stitch that is used for the front of the sock. Now, why did I choose this stitch? Why are they green? In a lovely green, by the way. Uh, if you're new to this podcast, which I've noticed a lot of people are, and I'm so, so thankful that you've decided to spend a little bit of crafty time with me, then you don't know that a green is my obsession. I love green and all its shades. Okay, not all its shades. Um, there are some greens I do not like. Army green? No. Uh, but chartreuse, my word. Anyway, these are the Endor Moon socks. And the Endor Moon socks are a pattern inspired by Star Wars. And the reason this all happened was because Anna of Stitchcraft and Wizardry um, kind of challenged me to it. She didn't challenge me. Uh, she said that maybe she would ask me to design a Star Wars sock pattern. So challenge accepted and completed, Anna. This sock answered that challenge. And why did I call it the Endor Moon Socks? Because I was trying to find a stitch that would actually represent the planet of Tatooine. You know, when you first um, see it from the Naboo. I'm not gonna go into this again because I went into it in the last podcast and it was just a whole bunch of missing words and disaster and fail at the English language. So I'm gonna move forward and say that the stitch I had chosen looked completely different worked in the round as stitch tends tend to do. They look different, worked flat, than in the round. So the squished single crochet, when it was worked in the round, reminded me of the trees and vines that the rebels see when they are taken to the Ewok main village in The Last Jedi. So that's why I call them the Endor Moon socks. And I'm so happy with them and to go along with the theme of forestry I of course chose a green yarn to bring them to life and I've used an interrupted moss stitch in the back because moss stitch forest right and in the front I'm just gonna stretch the stitch out a little bit so you see what I mean it just looks like a whole bunch of tall trees connected um, by vines so I'm super super happy with these socks the pattern is written up and it should be going live on the blog soon. Not as soon as my blouse, the summer fan top, but pretty soon, pretty soon because I'm excited. This one will also be available free on the blog and on Etsy as well. It's, um, this one includes a video tutorial if you want to dabble into your first pair of crochet socks. Oh, I cannot tell you how excited I am about, I mean, you can probably see, if you're watching, if you're listening, I probably sound like a mess, but if you're watching, you can probably tell how excited I am about these crochet socks. I actually want to make another pair. I mean, hello, love socks. Anyway, so the other finished item I have to share with you, there are actually four, I only brought two to share with you because um, Edison and I have already used the other two and I just, uh, I don't know. You won't see that they're dirty, but I know that they're dirty, so anyway. I've made face masks like a whole bunch of all the other crafty world. I've made face masks. I've made a face mask for me and for Edison, and I just made one for my parents that I'm going to be mailing soon because, of course, when I sat down to sew these face masks, I realized Mother's Day is three weeks away and my dad's birthday is two weeks away because my dad his birthday falls on May 4th, so isn't that great? So yes, his mask is this because May the 4th be with you and yes, I'm that geeky. Don't, don't question it. So I made him a Star Wars face mask. Um, the ties are meant to be adjusted so that should have a bead. I didn't have a bead big enough. So I'm sending them without the bead to my mom because she has a whole bunch of gemstones and mommy, 
Oh, I guess I should have said, mother, look away. <laughs> Whatever. She got this gorgeous fabric. I'm very happy with how these turned out and I think they'll be very useful. What I will say though is, for me, the downside to the face masks, I've made one in just quilting cotton in the back. Inside it has a 50-50 cotton linen fabric, just one piece to um, make it a little more filtery. This one does as well, but this one also has flannel in the back and the ones I made for Edison and me, I also used flannel. This is the only flannel fabric I have. It's got hedgehogs and little leaves. It's really, really cute. But flannel has a lot of little hairs in it, right? And it's uh, very tactile. When you put it next to your face, or on top of your face, as is this case, it's just it gets very itchy and I'm always trying to scratch my nose and kind of remember, oh, you can't really scratch, hello. So, yeah. But at least they work to keep me from, you know, getting other people full of my germs and from putting my hands on my face because that's all I want to do all the time. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Right. So those are all my finished items, I think. Oh, no, I actually have one more shoe the little thing to share with you, but I have been using that ever since I made it. So I'll also insert a picture here and it is a crochet drying mat. And this one is called the crochet retro drying mat. And it was inspired by a very mundane task of washing dishes. And I had run out of space in my drying rack and I had all these mugs and cups that still needed to be, you know, placed to dry. So I thought to myself, why don't I just crochet a little drying mat that's specifically for my cups and mugs and wine glasses and all that mugware, drinking wear. So that's what I did. I uh, It's a free pattern on the blog and there's also a tutorial for it on the blog as well. And no, that one's not on YouTube. It's just a photo tutorial on the blog. What is on YouTube though is a tutorial for the stitch that I use for the Endorm one socks, the Squish Single Crochet tutorial. There is a video tutorial for that as well as a photo tutorial, all posted on my blog and on YouTube. So if you want to check those out, feel free. So as you can see, the Crochet Retro Drying Mat features a lovely single crochet cluster stitch and my favorite color combos green and blue because green goes with everything it's so 60s it's so mod i love it and this actually is just made up of scraps of cotton yarn that i found in my stash stash because i thought it was the perfect stash busting project and of course it has a little crab stitch border because at first i attempted to do a shell stitch border but i didn't like how it was looking with the drying mat so i went with a crab stitch border which is my mom's favorite type of border or reverse single crochet whatever you want to call it of course now that i've made this retro drying mat i want to make it in a rug i want to make it in a bigger version so it can be a full-on drying mat and it's cotton, so it's completely washable. And in case you are wondering, all the links to everything I'm talking about will be provided in the down bar below. All the links except this summer fan top. I'll include the summer fan top when I upload the pattern on Tuesday. I'll edit the details so you guys can access it directly from YouTube as well. But if not, just keep your eyes peeled on the blog. Okay. So I've actually been very, very busy bee here and it's very exciting and it's just made the creative juices keep on flowing, okay? Just, just, just keep flowing. So the other thing I was going to share with you guys is my knit. My knit is a half finished object because I believe I had mentioned this before, I joined the Stitchcraft and Wizardry's second sock syndrome swap. I believe that's what the swap was called and it was a closed, it was closed already. Uh, basically you had, you entered your, all your information, you were given a partner and you knit a sock for said partner. And I finished the sock I was supposed to knit for my partner. I have not woven in any ends because I'm panicking that it won't fit her. So I left the ends without weaving and I just said, 
I really hope you don't have to take it back, but if you do, you absolutely can because I left the ends without being woven in. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous. So this honestly, this was such a fun sock to knit. It's called the You Are Bowtiful socks because there are kind of bow designs running on either side of the leg and on the heel. It was a pattern, well it is a pattern designed by Anna of Stitch Craft and Wizardry specifically for this swap that runs until the 25th. So I'm going to be mailing this out on Monday, made it before the month deadline that you had to knit just one sock. And I made this in lovely gorgeous yarn from Craft Noon Treats and she dyed this colorway and I believe it's called eye candy with an attitude and it is in her 80% Coriadil Polworth wool and 20% nylon. It's non super wash so recommended hand washing with lukewarm water and it's just got all these colors that you'd normally find in those little heart shaped candies. So we've got oranges, greens, um, magentas, fuchsias, pinks, pink orangey colors, light blues, purples, all in this one hank of yarn that was beautiful. You can see how it worked up and this is how it was caked. You can see all the colors just running through there. So I'm very happy to have finished this. I loved the pattern and I love that they were shorty socks because Florida, but I plan on making um, a pair for me because I still have to knit the sock that's going to come in the mail and then a pair for my mom because she always gets at least one pair of handmade socks a year and god I still owe my sister a pair of socks <sighs> I can't I can't keep up I really can't so I actually have not really touched the socks that I had started for me last year for my birthday I think I got past the heel and I'm at the gusset decreases, but that's, that's, that's it. And I believe I was there the last time I showed it to you. So nothing much has changed, but I am working on another crochet garment, which is not really another crochet garment. It's well, it is another crochet garment, but it is a pattern that I've already designed. It's I'm working on another version of the bubble in time top. And this version is actually in DK weight. And, okay, I made a mess. But it's actually in DK weight, and I am working it because I was going through my closet, you know, trying to find things that I like in there. And I had purchased this skirt last year. This beautiful, bright skirt with lots of tropical theme prints, and Puerto Rico is there. You know, no space in between, but it's still... Puerto Rico. So it's just a very fun, bright, perfect summer skirt. It's a linen blend skirt, but I didn't have a top to wear with it. And the colors it's got, it's magenta, a yellowy orange, a mint green, a dark blue, a sky blue. And I don't really have those colors in my closet. And I didn't want to wear blue on blue, but I was going through my cotton yarn stash and look, don't tell me that, that this orange that I'm holding up from the curse shade is not the exact shade of, shade of the one in the skirt. It is. Um, this is some leftover yarn that I had. It's Lolly by Conway and Bliss. It's discontinued yarn. It's been discontinued for two or three years already. And I had two and a half balls left in my stash of this. Um, now the two and a half balls are 50 gram balls, so I actually only have 100 grams, and I thought I was going to be striping the more reddish orangey color with the mango, this is called mango, the color is mango and it's a yellowy orange, but when I striped it, it just looked like the Spanish flag. I was not okay with that. Not, no offense to uh, anyone from Spain or nothing like that I just I didn't I didn't want to look like a flag so I just left the bobble stitch border in that bright color and decided to um, see how far a 50 gram ball took me because 
Even though this is decay weight, I plan it on being a considerably more crop top than the original because the skirt I want to pair it with is very high waist and I want the bobble to just touch the skirt. So I don't really need it to be that long. But still, I found a seller on Amazon that had a couple balls of this yarn left. So I ordered three more. Hopefully that will be enough. And if it's not, that's all I have to work with, okay? So I will keep updating you on this. And also, I'm gonna make a skirt, totally gonna make a skirt with this same stitch combo because I flippin' love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, so what changes have I made to the Bubble and Time top to be able to make it in DK weight? None. Um, I'm using the smallest size. So of course I've just adjusted the hook size and I'm using a, I used a four millimeter hook for the bobble stitch border and I went down to a 3.75 for the body because the pattern has you work a 3.75 for the bobble stitch border and a 3.5 for the actual body stitches. So that's what I went with, just decreasing 0.25 for the body stitch. And I will, of course, keep track of everything I'm doing for this so that I can write a blog post and share with you my notes on how to work up the same blouse in a thicker yarn. Also, this is considerably larger than the small that is written for the fingering weight. I haven't actually measured it in a ruler, but I would say it is about... 19 to 20 inches wide on one side so it would be a very comfortable medium i'm definitely going to say this would be a small medium rather than just a small so oh i didn't tell you what this yarn was because i don't know i don't have a ball band for this yarn i do know it came in a knit crate subscription box don't remember which one i do know it's 100 percent wool so once again, I'm combining fibers because I have a huge amount of wool and a uh, significantly less amount of cotton, but still a pretty de decent amount of cotton in my stash. So cotton for Florida, yay! Wool for Florida, a little iffy, you know, there's that one week a year that we can wear it. So I'm just trying to combine them in ways that will be useful for Florida. Okay, so those are all the projects I've been working on, but it is not all the projects I will be working on. I have another sock design that I'm going to be working up, and this one will also be submitted to a monthly subscription box, Knit Crate. It'll be submitted to Knit Crate. If Knit Crate doesn't um, it, choose it for their box, then I will put the pattern up for free on my blog like I usually do which is an exciting prospect because I am all about the crochet socks. Um, if you have never crocheted socks before and would like me to do a so sock expose, then please comment down below and I will put up a, the next podcast I do will then feature all the crochet socks I've made, the differences between them, what I've learned from making crochet socks, uh, what stitches work best, what hooks work best, the importance of gauge, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Crochet socks are more finicky than knit socks. So if you are going to make them, math, okay? Math is your friend. And yeah, I can put all that together in a blog post and a video podcast as well. So if it's something you guys are interested in, please comment down below. And if it's something you're not interested in, but we still have something to say, uh, yeah, comment. I love reading your comments and answering each and every one and interacting with you other than just, you know, talking to this camera, which my dog just stares at me all the time and goes, why are you just talking to yourself? So I'm gonna talk now a little bit about acquisitions but more than that it's kind of a little favorites video that i'm including here favorites section i should say because this is already a video so if you only came for the crochet content then thank you so much for joining me but if you'd like to hear a little bit about things i am really loving this month and then a little bit about my me 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 then um stay tuned
Right, so first things I acquired very recently that I'm loving to the max and you know what's gonna happen to it. I'm gonna show you some yarn. So Catherine of Craft Room and Treats, she had a couple of monthly subscription box boxes for March left over and I got, a <laughs> oh my God. It's, I don't think I got impatient, but I kept searching her Etsy shop every day because I wanted to purchase it ever since she showed the yarn. It was based on a sari, a chartreuse sari. Yes. So I was stalking her Etsy shop and finally I thought I had just missed the update and I was out of an opportunity to get some. So I messaged her through Etsy and uh, I was like, oh, hey, so, you know, what's up with this yarn? Do you still have it? Do you sell out? She's like, no, I'm actually getting ready to put it in the shop now. Would you like one? Yes, woman, yes. So anyway, I bought the sock. And it's chartreuse, okay? It is chartreuse. Look at this, okay? So one color is a true tonal chartreuse. It's it's gorgeous. I, I, I have nothing to say. It's chartreuse. I love it. And the other one is a bit more muted chartreuse, and it's got speckles of fuchsia, aquas, um, darker greens, oranges, yellows. So guess what, guys? I have 200 grams, 800 meters. What does that mean? Garment. That's what that means. Garment. Yes, I am going to make a garment with this. And I already know what I'm making too. At first, I thought I would knit a garment, but ooh. it's not that I'm afraid to because I even have an idea of, of garments I want to make. A lot of them are patterns from Andy Satterland. Um, and then the honey pullover as well. But I just ugh, crochet, please. Yes. Yes, anyway. Uh, and also brings a 30 gram mini in yellow. This 30 gram mini will go to something else, actually. And if you're wondering, this is her Corydale Polworth wool and 20% nylon. Lovely, lovely sock yarn, which of course doesn't necessarily have to be used for socks. So that's item numero uno on the list of things I'm loving. Number two. I cannot describe and in case it's too far away and a camera didn't focus this is black tea by Tivana it is Earl Grey cream flavored black tea with lavender and vanilla <laughs> lavender and vanilla oh my goodness lavender and vanilla notes okay and of course, I drink it with warm milk, frothy warm milk, and it makes the perfect cup of tea every morning, and I really wish you guys could smell it. Mm -hmm. I got this at Walmart. At the we have a neighborhood market Walmart here, and that's where I did my, two weeks ago, I did my grocery shopping because they were pretty well stocked. You know, they didn't have pasta and things like that, but uh, all the fresh veggies were available. And I actually have to go grocery shopping this week again. Uh, we're out of fresh fruit and veggies and milk and cheese and uh, I don't want to. It feels so icky going out there. Anyway, tea, lovely. What else is making me really happy is putting on makeup. I've been putting on makeup for three days straight and more importantly than that, I've been using my favorite orange lipstick. Yes, the one I'm wearing right now. Mm, lips, see this beautiful shade? This is Milagro by Kat Von D. And I actually have it in the Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. I don't know if she makes it in the normal lipsticky lipstick, you know, tube lipstick. This shade, this could be the only lipstick shade I wear forever. And I wouldn't mind at all. I love this orange lipstick. Love it. So, those are some things I've been loving this month and some things that I haven't been loving this month that I kind of told you went hand in hand with all this designing. I've, 
um, you know, I've, there have been body parts that have been bothering me for a while, mostly my shoulders and my elbows, and I thought it was crochet related, but I was going to the chiropractor every week, which I'm not now because, you know, quarantined, but I was going to the chiropractor every week and it was helping, but it wasn't solving the problem. And me being stubborn, I try to run away from doctors as much as possible, but I can't do it anymore. Why? Because I now have um, joint pains all over my body. There's not a section of my body that doesn't hurt. I have the um, my neck, my shoulders, my elbows, my wrists, my every single one of my fingers. They are just, it's, it's painful to move them. And yesterday when I was making sourdough biscuits, because that's another thing I'm loving, baking and sourdough, my fingers just hurt horribly. And so do my knees and my hips. Anyway, I have to thank a lovely viewers of the podcast who uh, when I posted on, well, actually Insta friends and viewers of the podcast who, when I posted about this on Instagram, recommended some products that I have purchased, um, some balms to just work with the pain, and um, they have helped. I, it's it's more manageable. It's it's not something that goes away, but I can ignore it. So definitely, when this crisis is a little bit more controlled, and I do not fear stepping foot in a doctor's office, I will be taking my bum straight to a doctor's office and explaining the situation and hoping it's something that can be corrected through natural means and not surgical. Um, but anyway, I would, I hate to leave you on such a sad note, but I really wanna know, forget everything I just said about joint pains. How have you been? Please comment down below and please share what you've been crafting on. I loved reading about that on last week's, well, Last podcast, I loved reading what you were crafting on, and just let's let's share, okay, guys? The good, the bad, the ugly, the real, the fake. Let's share it all. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for spending a little bit of crafty time with me today. I hope I was able to make your day a little bit brighter because your comments certainly make my day a little bit brighter. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do so already. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Pinterest, Instagram. Ravelry, I forget wherever I am, but I'm not on Facebook, so don't look for me there. And thank you so much for sharing the crafting love. Bye, happy crafting.